let's start by talking about kids these days. This is one way that the world is really, really different. Uh, with my youngest daughter, we have spent the last year cataloging the story of young people that are charting their own course to a career they love. We've, we've posted over 100 blogs in this Generation Do-It-Yourself series, and I want to quickly um, introduce you to four of those people that I think are illustrative. First, John Merrill. He went to Washington State, graduated a few years after my older daughter, then went to culinary school. He was smart about getting work experience. He worked in four different restaurants and then had the chance to open uh, his own restaurant as the, as the head chef. He did it for two years, but something was, was, was itching at John, and so he sold everything. He quit, and he and his wife uh, packed up, and they, for the last three years, have been traveling the world, uh, filming a, a web series on cooking and uh, travel. So an amazing sense of adventure for a kid who, you know, six years out of school seemed to have accomplished everything that he wanted to accomplish. Andrea Price uh, was an AmeriCorps volunteer. She worked in the, in the Delta in Arkansas. Uh, she saw a lot of kids that didn't have a very good level of nutrition or fitness, so she started a fitness company. Uh, then she started uh, a campaign to end her and hunger and to promote uh, good eating. She went back to school at the Clinton School. She grabbed a degree there. Uh, then she did some business consulting in Belize. At least that's what she told the IRS she was doing. And, uh, and then she joined the Arkansas Community Foundation and then uh, recently launched the Giving Net, a, a nonprofit to promote wellness. So 10 years out of school, she's had uh, you, a, a series of adventures, and she really sees herself as an evolving uh, public servant. Uh, Andrea Ween um, was a journalist, and she contributed to 12 different publications. She had about 10 different jobs over the course of 10 years, and then uh, decided she really had to follow her passion and wrote a book and started an organization called Gap to Great to help families recognize the importance of uh, a great gap year. And then finally, Omar. Omar uh, grew up in uh, Switzerland. He went to a, an IB school there. He studied both law and uh, business. He was convinced after flirting with particle physics that he wanted to be a human rights lawyer. Um, and then he and his brother launched uh, what's become Goodwall to help match high school kids with the best possible post-secondary uh, experience. So when, when I look at young people like that, th these are not average young people, obviously, but I think they're illustrative of what's happening. Um, so what, what kinds of things did you see in common between these young people? Risk What's that? Risk takers. Yeah, they are risk, risk takers, right? Um, one, one thing that I noticed is uh, a lot of movement, right? These kids are, are changing jobs, if not careers, every year or two. Um, they are driven by, we, I used to say passion. Uh, but it's, it's less than that. It's really just curiosity. It's often a tap on the shoulder that won't go away. Uh, and that may develop into a passion. Um, they're all impact focused. These, these are young people that really want to make a difference in the world. And they're quite entrepreneurial. As you said, they're, uh, they're risk takers. Um, they've, and you've noticed they've, they have gone in and out of organizations. They work for other people, then they freelanced, and then they started in organizations. I think we're going to see a lot more young people uh, that live like this. And so first point is, are, are you preparing, is your school preparing young people for this kind of um, a, a work environment? I call it a project-based world, where, where your career is really increasingly a sequence of projects. 